15 miles to the field is Falcon 1, driven by Kurt Edwards and Dr. Sandra Woodley. gentlemen. Gentlemen, Gentlemen, welcome to today's game. Eastern New Mexico, you're our visitor, so you're going to call the toss. This is heads, and that's tails. Okay, that's heads, and that's tails. What's your call? Tails. He said tails. Mr. Edwards, please let it hit the ground. It's a tails. Eastern New Mexico has won the toss. They've elected to defer. UT Permian Basin will receive in the north end zone.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I should say early afternoon. It's almost 6 o'clock here in Midland. We are at Grande Communications Stadium for the Transglobal Productions Game of the Week presented by Sewell Ford. Today's game, the UT Permian Basin Falcons versus the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico. And with me up here, Kyle uh, Hubbard doing the uh, analyst work today. And then we have Larry Thornhill, who's filling in for Clay today to do the statistician work. Today's game produced and directed by Bob Bailey. Debbie Bailey handles the replay. And we are just about to get underway, Kyle. What do you think about today's game? Well, I think the keys for the game today, we're going to deal with a very stiff wind coming from the south to the north, right to left on your screen as you're watching the game. I think that's going to affect the passing game a little bit. I think for UTPB, they need better and be a more consistent play from Clayton Roberts, their quarterback. He needs to be the difference maker tonight for the UTPB offense. I think they need to uh, uh, defensively don't give up the big play. As you see the kickoff go out of the back of the end zone. Uh, their uh, quarterback-receiver combination of Valencia to Mannyweather is a pretty lethal combo. They have a 95-yard hookup this year for a touchdown versus Central Washington. They like to throw it to Mannyweather. He's their favorite receiver. UTPB defense has got to play solid tonight, take that away. Get some pressure on Valencia. And I think, as always, you got to win the kicking game, Barry. Falcons are going to start from the 25. And you mentioned the kicking game, and uh, that means the, a couple of kickers today instead of the one single. Carson Roberts will be punting, but I'm sure Michael Mayfield will be doing the placement uh, work. That first game, uh, first uh, carry was good for a yard. After this play, Clay, uh, Kyle will set the... Um, Offense for the Falcons. Going to be a throw. Oh, nice catch. Yep, nice catch is right as they're going to get out beyond the 30-yard line, almost to the 35, and that one was caught by Matt Zubiotti. You know how we love our tight ends. Yes, we do. Clayton Roberts is the quarterback, number 11. He's going to try to sneak it across, and I believe he has for the Falcon first down. Their running backs, Nate Tilford, number 33, and Javon Davis, number 22. We'll see a plethora of receivers tonight for UT Permian Basin. MJ Link, number five. Number two, Kobe Robinson. Number nine, Balen Ware. Number 10, Jordan Smart. Number 80, Marcus Molina. We've already seen Matt Zubiotti. There's a nice run off the right side. That's uh, Javon Davis, freshman out of Houston. Their offensive line is anchored at the center position by number 54, Hunter Hickok. The guards, number 63, Ivan Pena. Number 73, Matt Groschel. And the tackles, number 79, Ryan Wilson. And number 77, Ramon Diaz. So it's going to be second down. Nice little pass out here to the near sideline there. Yep, that's going to be caught by um, Smart by uh, Jordan Smart. Jordan's from Round Rock, Texas. And they're going to be about a yard, two yards short of what they need for the first down. Got to get to the uh, to the big marker there at the 47-yard line. Look how big that little defensive line is, Barry. Yeah, usually Tilford's the guy they, they uh, call on. They're smart again with a second catch already. Had been used a lot lately. Well, it's been used here in the early going. Two little, good little stop pass out here. They set recognize soft coverage from the corner down here, playing off about seven, eight yards. They're going to try to keep everything in front of them. They know UTPB has a big strike pack, pack capability on their offense in the passing game. There it is again. Yeah, Clayton Roberts again. The who? Who dad, who dad, who dad? That's smart. Yep, Jordan Smart. And yeah, Smart's going to be up to the 42-yard lines for a gain of eight. As you know, the opponents want you wanting to save that old TV show, Get Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd make a nice poster, wouldn't it? It sure would. Hey, it's homecoming. I forgot to mention that homecoming today. All week long, they've had festivities going on at the campus. And we'll have the uh, crowning of the uh, queen and uh, king. Uh, queen or a court, I guess, is how they do it. Uh, Roberts is going to quickly throw it out left, and he's got MJ Link, who's good for about a touchdown a, 
a game. That's going to be into the 38-yard line, so that's going to be enough to move the chains. Uh, we were at 88 degrees when we kicked off, looking to cool down to 75 by the time the game ends. 51% humidity, 44% humidity. And that wind that Kyle mentioned south from uh, at 17, and that might play um, havoc with the passing games. Here's Javon Davis gets locked, uh, it caught up in the clog there of offensive linemen. Who's a main guy on defense for them? Well, I think defensively, it looks like, Barry, they're uh, their main guys. They like to run a, looks like a 4-3 defense. Uh, the ends are Mason Richards and Kendrick Milford. And Richards is the guy I'm talking about. He leads the uh, conference in sacks, seven and a half. Right now, they've done a good job of keeping him in check, not letting him get to Roberts, and as I say that, he's under a little pressure, but a great throw to Zubiotti, and what a catch. Oh, I love Matt Zubiotti. Wow. Down to the six-yard line, big tight end. Where's that guy from? I forget. He's from El Paso. Yep. 6'2", 240, and it's all muscle. He's right up the seam where the hash marks are, Barry. They did not account for him coming off the line of scrimmage. And Clayton did a good job of delivering the ball to him down to the five-yard line. 29 yards on the catch and run. Now, nope, they're going to throw it. But for a second there, they were going to try to run it, uh, try to get the ball to Smart. He's heavy in the game plan, apparently. So they cannot get a first down. They can only get a TD. And, boy, do we need it. We need to jump out ahead of these fellows. Got a new coach this year. What's his name? I forget. <laughs> My mind just went blank. Uh-oh. Right. That's not unusual. It stays blank most of the time. Uh-oh. I've got Robinson in the game as one of the slot receivers. Let's see if they try to get him the ball here, Barry. Well, he's only scored once this year. It'd be nice to get him in the end zone again. There he is. Wow, what a nice throw. They fake was a fake screen to the wide receiver out here, Barry. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. Just, uh... They faked the screen and then slipped one of the receivers right in behind the secondary, and Clayton did a good job of getting him the ball and scoring the UT Permian Basin touchdown. And who do you think that pass was thrown to? None other than MJ Link. MJ Link. Now the extra point. Come on, that's Michael Mayfield. Mayfield is true to the mark and opening drive of the game. Falcons break on top at seven nothing. With 10-11 to play in the first quarter, well, what are your early thoughts? Well, I, I said Clayton's got to be the uh, difference maker for the uh, Falcon offense, and he sure showed it on that drive right there alone. He was 7 of 8 for 65 yards in a touchdown pass, and that's going to get the Eastern New Mexico defense now, kind of get them back on their heels, stop that rush a little bit, try to, be, try to get into coverage, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't throw some blitzes in there and try to get some uh, pressure on uh, Clayton Roberts, but he was definitely the difference maker there. And uh, the big the big pass to uh, uh, Zubiade down the seam really helped set that drive up, Barry. 439 off the clock to go 75 yards and 12 plays. And uh, the, the uh, payoff, of course, was MJ Link grabbing home to grabbing hold of the uh, pass for the TD uh, there at the end. Link is good for just about a touchdown a game. Somewhere in that vicinity. Let me see how many he scored on the year. I need to look real quick. Link's uh, seventh touchdown of the season. By the way, their coach's name is uh, Ty Hyatt. And he's really changed everything. They normally were running a uh, a triple option, and now they're throwing the ball, and they rank sixth in the conference in throwing the ball. So the kickoffs come, on, come down short at the 29-yard line, and from there, here's the defense by the Falcons. The Falcons are going to start with the uh, defensive end being uh, T.J. Poli, number 92, tackles Tyson Carter and LaDadrian Glasker. And at the other end position, our over-liable number 24, John O'Kelly. We'll see him in the game. 
The linebackers are Myquan Mays, number zero, and number 14, Darian Forge. They're very busy and active in this defense. I'll do the safeties and corners after this play. The freshman quarterback is going to run the ball here, Valencia. Valencia gets a whole hat full of uh, Myquan Mays, and that's something that a lot of opponents are used to. Uh, last week, though, boy, what a game. DeAndre Robinson, 17 tackles, most by a Falcon player with a name other than the great linebacker that graduated. I'm getting, giving you a lead in here. Oh, Mr. Hode. Thank you, Gil. Chris yep. Hode. Yep, I was trying to lead you no, into the. I was looking to do the corners and stuff. and. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he was very active last week with all those tackles, and there's a big quick pass right there. And that's, you know, who couldn't catch in the pass. That's Justin Mannyweather from Fullerton, California. He leads the conference 25 catches, 673 yards, and 10 scores, including that 95-yarder that you mentioned earlier. This, is good. this one goes for 15 out to the 47, Nathan Valencia. Was right on the money. Of course, he has what's, who's considered arguably the best receiver in conference, but we're going to argue and say that our number uh, five is. Now they're going to hand the ball. Another quarterback's going to keep it. Valencia gets a mouthful of black helmet for that one, led by up there defensively number 18. In my mind, just uh, drew a blank. Uh, Octavia Spencer leading the way. He's a senior. Corners for the secondary in the UTPB defense are 21, Jox Tyler, and number 16, Trent Ward. They have three safeties we'll see in the game, J.T. Walker, number four, DeAndre Robinson, number seven, and Dante Stewart, number one. Ward is the leading uh, interceptor on this team. He's from, is it Andrews? Is that right? Trent Ward is from Lubbock, Monterey. Lubbock, Monterey. So the pass very quickly goes out to uh, – Number three, Martavius Dill from uh, Webb, Mississippi. Well, I tell you, from Mississippi all the way up to New Mexico. Not a short drive, is it? No shortcut for sure. And nope. Trent Ward right there on the spot to make the tackle. This is third and nine. This is a big play for the UTPB defense. They're going to need to stop them here and get off the field. Yeah, they only got one yard on that one. So watch out for their number one receiver. That's Manny Weather, number two. Legal Let's see, where is he at? Let's uh, and is he at the top of the hey, screen? The I'll start. Offense, Offense. number 76. Five-yard penalty, third down. Now they're going to have to go from five yards further back. Let's see if we can get off the field. Force a punt. Boy, I'd love, what I'd love to see today, punt goes up in the air. Punt comes down. Robinson goes pfft, down the field. Touchdown. Yeah, that would be nice. And to do that, yeah. they've got to stop them here, third and 15. Please, fellas, make my dreams come true. Third and 14, actually. Yep, third and 14. They did gain one yard in the first two plays. Now, Valencia very quickly is going to throw the ball, has a man open, and, oh, he's going to be very close to what he needs for the first. That's the tight end, Barry, number 89 for them. Catching the ball right there on their uh, in their tight end offense, they went right in the middle of the field where the soft part of the I zone defense was. And Eastern New Mexico is going to go for it here on fourth and about a yard or so. That was Brazai White that caught it, and he's up to the 45-yard line, so 44 actually. So it's going to be fourth and one. Oh, you gotta gotta have some faith in your boys, you know, to go this early. See if they bring a run blitz here. There it is. I yep, think they got it. Yeah, they got it. Just simply handed the ball off to number 22. Oh, my mind just uh, tell you, it's not working today. That's uh, Raekwon Beverly out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Boy, that's quite a change going from there in Florida to where they are Fort in New Dallas, Mexico. New Mexico, yep. yeah. I tell you, Barry, they're big, they have big offensive line, 255, 265, 275, 295, and 240. They have some size up on their offensive line there. 41-yard line is where they got to. Uh, he just, uh, I think he stutter-stepped a little bit too much there at the end of the play. 
The uh, uh, number 42 for us tried to rip the ball out, Hayden Kelly, but uh, unsuccessful. What's the what's the turnover uh, difference between these two teams? Well, right now it looks like uh, Eastern New Mexico has fumbled uh, seven. They were minus seven in the fumble department. Uh, UTPB is in minus one in the in that area as well, and they uh, oh did he catch that almost. Man, what a great play over there by number sixteen again, Trent Ward. Watch no, that him. was eighteen. Eighteen? Yeah. It was Spencer. Oh, okay. Well, hard to see that six and eight without my glasses. I'm talking about my binoculars on. I was trying to get some of that uh, say information for you there, but. This Eastern New Mexico team will turn the ball over. Their quarterback's thrown nine interceptions this year. And they've lost how many fumbles? Seven. What are they, plus or minus? They're minus overall? seven. They're minus seven. Oh, that did, sounds good for us. Yeah, maybe we can get a couple of those tonight. We are what? Uh, let's see. Well, Roberts has thrown seven interceptions. There's yeah, one Yeah, that's right a pick. There. He threw it right to him. How about Johnny on the spot? We couldn't cue that up any better. As uh, he throws their quarterback, throws an interception right in the middle of the field. Watch. Yeah, that was Darian Forge. Darian Forge. I think that's his first interception of the season, boys and girls. Now that ball was behind yep. the receiver anyway. Forge's first pick of the season and gives his guys good field position at the 32-yard line. Yeah, that will give Hart Valencia 10 interceptions on the year. Had a little trouble turning the ball over. They did there. Now the Falcons need to take advantage of this. Trip set, see if they throw the screen down here, Barry. 5-12 to play in the first oh. quarter. Uh, just a big scrum there in the middle of the field gets hardly anything. Let's see, what are we? We are plus, we are minus one. And they are, what'd you say? Minus seven or something? In the fumbles lost category, yeah. No, I mean overall. Well, I'll look it up myself yep. here just a second. Yeah. So they got nothing on first down. It's uh, second and ten. Very quickly to Kobe Robinson, who uses that quick speed, that twitch speed they call it, up to the 46-yard line for a gain of 14. He's in the slot run pass option there to freeze the linebackers. Little play action pass there, and Robinson just went up the seam and caught the ball for a Falcon first down. Yep. And they're apparently, it looks like we're hoping on the move again. And hand it off uh, inside. Not a whole lot of running room there. See, that offensive line is wearing on that defense right now as we're led by the center by Hunter Hickok. 6'2", 290 from Juneau, Alaska. Their guards, Ivan Pena from Fort Stockton. And Matt Groschel, 330 from Greenwood. And on the other side, the tackles, Midland Greenwoods, Ryan Wilson at 310, and Raymond Ramon Diaz at 300 from El Paso. That was Nate Tilford on that first on that last carry. This time out to smart, smart again. We were talking about, uh, you know, going from West Palm Beach to New Mexico. What about from Juneau, Alaska mm -hmm. to uh, New Mexico? Might Holy a, Macarena. Might be a little warmer here, you think? Yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be third, and looks like about six is what they're going to need. Need to convert here, Barry. Keep that turnover. Do something with that turnover to get yourself some yeah. points. Roberts is not much of a runner. Doesn't really like to run the ball, although he's had a little bit of success. Very quickly, spin throws the ball out to uh, Davis. Gets tipped at the line. Was there a flag? No uh, flag. I don't nope. see it. Amazing. Well, Richards. I hate to see it wasted. They're going to waste the. Uh, Interception by Forge and have to punt the ball away. And um, kicker from Permian should be punting the ball, which he is, Carson Roberts. So Carson Roberts comes on to put a toe to it. Uh, coming into the ball game, um, averaging uh, over 40 yards a punt. That's pretty good. Of course, in the college game, they expect you to get uh, start out around wow. 40. Look at that thing turn over. Check up. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah, Manny Weather let it go, and it's going to be down to the two. 
That is exactly what you want out of that deal. You want to check that ball up and pin them inside the 10 yard line. Eastern New Mexico. Gonna Time out. Media. Gonna, I'm going to have their back up against their own goal line there. Going to start first and 10 from their own three. As you heard, uh, there is a TV timeout, media timeout, they call it. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Our game of the week presented as it is every week by Sewell Ford. Sewell family has been selling cars and trucks in Texas for more than 100 years since 1911. You know, surprisingly, if you have a 1911 Ford, you would not be worth the huge big bucks that you'd expect it to be. Uh, probably around 16,000 maybe. You're the car expert, so you would know, especially the the older those cars are, it'd have to be in great shape to be worth more than that. I yep, think. I love some of those, some of those early Fords. I wouldn't mind having one. Gain was five. And it'll be second down and uh, five for the uh, Greyhounds. Nathan Valencia, their quarterback. Two tight ends trying to match up UTPB and move them off the line of scrimmage. And the UTPB defense won that battle there, Barry. Where's Valencia from? Uh, says he's from Elk Grove, California. Elk Grove, California. We know where the backup quarterback's from. Yes, we do. He's so from 20 miles to the west of us from here. That's right. I'd love to see him get in the game today. He's number 11. So now it's uh, going to be third down and a um, little bit of real estate left. What's well, something like third and five, third and six? Lindsay a look for Manny Weather. So Manny Weather is number two. That's where he likes to look when he's looking for a receiver. And if not him, he'll look for, for Dill, who's number three. Oh. You know, instead he throws it to number four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing because they had Manny Weather over here on the sideline running by himself. Uh, UTPB defense keyed on the middle of the field, and that's where the pass went. And now we ought to get a little bit better field position here, Barry, with them, uh, even though they are kicking with the wind from south to north. And it was intended for Zach Fields. He's from Ontario, California. Of course, they brought in a lot of uh, players from all over the nation with coach, that change of their offense. Didn't Coach say the other day that they had some D1 guys that had transferred in? Yeah, just like we do. Yep. And, uh, that punt went out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be right at about the 35-yard line. This is great field position for the Falcon offense. And that's uh, their 35, Time right? For media. And yet another media timeout. We'll take it with them.
can find your next newer pre-owned vehicle, car, truck, SUV at Sewell Ford, Highway 191 between Odessa and Midland. They have an awesome dis, uh, inventory to choose from, and they are our game presenting sponsor, and uh, we certainly thank Sewell Ford for making these progress possible. Now starting from the uh, Greyhound 35, Clayton uh, Roberts, I don't know if that was a, mis, uh, a miscommunication or what, but he ended up carrying the ball instead of Davis and gets down to the 28-yard line. I think that might be a little design there, Barry. Just get those linebackers to maybe key on the back coming through, and then Roberts kind of following him right back into the middle of that line. That's a good job by him to find that open area and get about four yards on first down. Yeah, and I thought he got more than that. I thought he got to the 28, but they brought the ball back to the 31. Hey, let's look for Zubiati again. They were they found him in the seam a couple of times here in that first drive. And uh, second drive kind of kind of fizzled out. They're going to hand the ball off to Javon Davis. Javon's going to be a yard short of a first. At the 26-yard line. Good blocking on the right side there by Pena and Wilson along with the center to yes. uh, get that get that uh, hole opened up. Good twosome we have there with uh, Tilford and Davis. Well, what's your early thoughts on this uh, game going on? Well, I, my early thought is I'm very impressed with the, uh, uh, the Falcons right now offensively. And of course, that first drive went right down and scored. The defense has been very solid. Already have a takeaway in the ball game. They've uh, played well at the line of scrimmage. And uh, I would like to see here with this uh, short field get another uh, touchdown going into the win. They will not have the win until the second quarter. Maybe they can air it out a little more there. But they didn't have a problem with that going to the airways on the first drive, Barry. Uh, yeah, that first uh, that drive. Uh, that uh, started with the Darien Forge interception kind of fizzled out, but they scored That's on the, the opening. The first quarter. They scored on the first drive of the game, a six-yard pass from Roberts to Link, and now we have played through one, and we'll be back in just a moment. Our score at the end of one quarter is the Falcon 7, the Greyhound 0. Also homecoming for UTPB STEM Academy. If you direct your attention to the 20 yard line for the STEM Academy court, the sixth through eighth grade prince is Carter McMurdo and the princess is Mia Aguilar. Have a round of applause for your STEM Academy homecoming court. There's been a lot of debit cards found, and it's at the gate two ticket booth. Again, if you our game says they are each week that we broadcast the Falcons are presented by Sewell Ford. The Queen nominees today for homecoming are Abigail Flores, Alicia Green, Carrie Mims, Amaya Pryor, and Andrea S uh, Sotelo Valerio. Congratulations to them. We'll find out which is the lucky lady when we uh, come back uh, at halftime. So now it's going to be second down for the Falcons. Clayton Roberts looking over the field and uh, well, he kept the ball there. Okay. Trying to get a first down. He had to get to the 25. He didn't come close. Yeah, I think he's going to be about a half to a full yard short. Didn't get anything there. No push from the inside there. Good penetration by the Greyhound inside of their defensive line, and it's going to be fourth and one. And uh, I think the Falcons will go ahead and go for it here. Well, I think so. Now, does the quarterback know he's he's in a, in a uh, well, he does have one back there with him. He's got Davis, 
So he's got a choice of handing it off. If he was going to run it, he would have stayed under center. Yep, nope, that one just didn't connect. And I'm going to think that, um, that there is a flag. You know, we'll check the flag first of all. Let's see if this is roughing the passer, maybe. Maybe you might be right. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number six, half the distance, automatic first down. Yeah, that was a nice freebie. Although uh, Roberts wouldn't think it would be called a freebie. He did take a shot after delivering that ball there. Well, I, was, I was thinking that I was going to ask you, do you think Coach Kerrigan was going to uh, roll the dice? Become a riverboat gambler. Yeah. Well, instead, he doesn't have to worry about it. Now, they marked this one at the 13. And it'll be first and 10. Solo back there, you see, is the diminutive uh, Javon Davis. What is Davis? He's listed at, what, 5'5"? Five, five? 160 from Houston Nimitz High School. Yeah, so he and uh, Kobe Robinson can basically stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Mm. And look each other in the eye. This one intended for MJ Link and uh, falls incomplete. Kobe is 5'7", 155. And so Davis actually is two inches shorter. That can be possible. Yeah, Clayton's going to have to make a little adjustment now on some of his passes like that one there. He wanted to throw it to the back part of the end zone, but he's got the wind behind him. So that's going to give it a little push, obviously. And I have to make a little adjustment on some of those throws with the wind coming from his backside there on from the south to the north. Falcons can get a first down at the three yard line. Gonna have to, have to be a quick release, which it is. And uh, the defender fell down, but not to any advantage for us, unfortunately, it was intended for. Um, I'll just draw a blank again. Is that number 80 to Molina, I believe? Was that Molina? Looked Couldn't like tell it. if it was an 8-0 or not. It is. It's an 80. Well, again, they're going to be stuck at the 13 unless they can get a first down at the three-yard line. See look if they set themselves up for a field goal here. Now. I was going to say, look for that tight end. Yep. Yeah, which they did. Tried to get the ball into Zubiotti. Well, I guess they're going to have to bring out Michael Mayfield and try his first... Uh, Attempt of the season, uh, field goal related. He was kicking last week, hit a couple. DeCasas didn't even make the trip last week. So Michael Mayfield on to try his first uh, varsity college field goal from 31 yards out. Boy, had plenty of leg. And they got it. And three more are on the board. The Falcons have added their 10th point of the uh, of the ball game to lead 10 nothing. But uh, you know I, that's advantage I think Greyhounds because they had a penalty that moved it from the 26 to the 13. Kyle, and then once they got to the 13, they got no further. Yeah, tried to a couple passes there that were just off the mark. Uh, did not uh, hit, hit the uh, third down play to the tight end and settle for three. That's certainly what you want. Some points there, no doubt, Barry. I'd like to have seen him get in the end zone. I'm sure you and everybody else watching are at home and we're listening to the game here live uh, from, from Grande. We want to see a touchdown, but they've got a two-score lead now and just got to settle in and play some solid defense right now. Well, that was a seven play drive to go the 22 yards. I need to look and see what the time is on the clock. It's what, 14.02? 14.02. Okay, so they, uh, so they used uh, a minute, uh, two minutes and uh, 16 seconds probably. Mayfield with the uh, kick. Where's Mayfield from? Let me look real quick. Freshman from Denton, Geyer. Now, that's a good football program. Yes, they've been very good the last several years out in that area of the Metroplex. Now, the one thing about that was they had the ball after a Darien Forge interception, couldn't convert. And this time they get the ball at the uh, Greyhound 35. 
And they move as far as the 13, have to settle for a field goal. Got some help from a penalty. Right, so Coach Kerrigan's got to be a little flummoxed into why his offense is bogging down at the worst possible moment. As you can see down here, Barry, about the 40-yard line, that offensive group is together talking about maybe some of the schemes that they're getting up front from the Greyhound defensive front. Uh, maybe showing something a little different. Of course, those defenses like to stunt, just like ours do, move people around, try to create some confusion and a missed assignment. And uh, their defense, Barry, their defensive line has got some size to it. They're going to have to make some adjustments and see if they cannot uh, make some things happen next time they have the football. You know, with the wind at his back, they ought to be able to sail this thing down into Never Never Land, which they do further north i'm not even sure if it's come down yet so the uh, greyhounds will take over at the uh, 35 yard line got a defense has to think keep the intensity up right now 25 yard line yeah 25 as it goes out of the end zone you're right and the defense has got to keep their intensity up now uh play their keys do their assignments run rally to the football either through the air or uh, run however eastern New Mexico wants to do it. I still think uh, uh, certainly Manny Weather is going to be one of their top, top topics here or targets. So it's Bill. And uh, that's going to probably be, is that a false start or is that going to be on UTPB? It's going to be encroaching. Offside, defense, number 97, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, so uh, moving just a bit early. Joseph Williams got a little excited and got in the backfield before the ball was snapped. So it's first and five. Likely to be running plays. Mm. And they get absolutely nothing because Joseph Williams makes up for it with that tackle. Freshman making the play there from his defensive position for the Falcon defense. They only got a yard there, so it's going to be second and about four. Yep. Defense is playing well right now. Got to keep that intensity up, as I said, Barry. Can't relax. You're only up 10-0. And a very big conference game for the Falcons and the Greyhounds. Yeah, they want to they want to come back strong after uh, what happened in, uh, at Angelo State last week. They just didn't, were not on their game. Oh, Wrap him up. There you go. Yeah, well, man, they well they do complete the pass, and then they hang on for dear life, and uh, do not let him get away. That's Howard Russell on the receiving end. He was the lone back in the backfield. Who made the tackle? That's there? number 18. You know, there he is again. Yep, there's 18. Octavius Spencer, the senior, coming up, and here's a big third and about three. Where's Spencer from? I don't remember. I don't know either. I don't have a media guide with me here, Barry. Okay, I'll look it up here in a second. Yep. So yep. it's going to be third down. Mm. And uh, Manny Weathers is going to get a decent amount of yardage before being forced out. Now let's see, Howard Russell, is that who I was asking about or Manny Weather? Howard Russell's from Leesburg, Florida. Had a buddy of mine, lived in Leesburg, Florida for a number of years. Wow. And that's when he started his yearly trek to um, Orlando and to uh, Walt Disney World. And now he goes about, still does, he goes two or three times a year by himself. Doesn't even take the wife. Hmm. Flip the balance here. Go well, it's the happiest the place on earth, the one in uh, California. So I assume it's pretty happy. Yep. Whistle, whistle, whistle. Not to take too much time. Be in, uh, I think this is going to be an uh, encroachment on the defense. Offside, defense, number 99, causing the office to react. Five-yard penalty, first down. So who encroached? It was the defensive end down here, Barry, on the left side. Number 94 for our Falcons, I believe, is who that was. It was uh, Dominique Varela. From El Paso Coronado, the Thunderbirds. Yeah, we were familiar with them in the high school playoffs. Birmingham seemed to play them every year. Played them every year in the preseason for, my yeah. goodness, many years. 
years. Many years. They hand the ball off inside, and Russell just picked his spots and picked enough for a first down. Is it going to move the change? He's all the way down to the 44-yard uh, line on our side of the field. We are in the second quarter. Our little score bug that's usually at the bottom of the screen is inoperable today. For some reason, our score is 10 to nothing. Falcons uh, leading the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico. Eastern is uh, what, three and four? Is that right? Yes. Did we come in today? Yes. What's the, do you remember what the conference record is? Uh, gonna hand the ball off to Russell and Russell gets wrapped up by a few defenders led by uh, number 28 for the uh, Falcons. That's Jamil Pittman, who had a punt return TD last week. And uh, Falcon defense did a good job there, Barry, on first down, holding them to about three yards. I would expect this to be a pass, maybe a screen. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw play here, Barry. Okay, coach, make your mind up. Yeah, draw play. Okay. Hey, well, let's see if Coach Hubbard's right. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yep. Well, it's it uh, upended by J.T. Walker, but not before the Greyhound gets those legs moving down to the 28-yard line. That's uh, going to be a gain of 13 yards for Russell. I think Russell's the fellow, I think, that I said's from uh, Eastburg. Leedsburg, Florida. Well, sure, uh, not unusual on a college roster to see him from all over the nation. I mean, literally, because we've got guys from Alaska to Florida. From uh, We had a lot of guys from American Samoa when the program started up. You could, you could really tell who those guys were. Russell again gets through the, uh, through the line. I'm not sure if this is Russell. I think it's somebody else. Yeah, it looks like 26 it, is yeah. who that is. When Russell, it was Isaiah Tate. From San Diego, Barry. That's not short distance either. <laughs> nope. Or to Port Dallas, New Mexico. But I was going to live somewhere besides where I live. I think San Diego might be a good choice. Except they up and lost their NFL team, which I'm sure the uh, residents of uh, San Diego are still upset about I would be they have the Padres still but they don't have the uh, Chargers and off inside doesn't really go much of any place and uh, yeah, gonna an make the tackle it's going to be number 96 Carter an NBA franchise there Barry do you know who was there at one time All right was well, the San Diego that's where the Clippers were right yes Clippers started there after moving, I believe, from Can Kansas City, Omaha. That sounds, have to look that, up. that sounds Kansas about City, right. Omaha Kings, I think they moved And this up. was quite a few years before uh, Ballmer Arlies. bought them. You know, right. Steve Ballmer's now the owner, but uh, and he's really turned them into a, I don't know if he's the reason, but turned them into a very important franchise. Well, they hand this one off to Isaiah Tate. And Isaiah Tate takes it the final 18 yards. Just found a hole right there. And look, there is nobody, no linebacker, no cornerback, no safety, nothing. And he's into the end zone. And so Cooper Hamilton now will come on for the extra point. They found some weakness over on the right side or their right side uh, of their offensive line. They picked on that. Defensive left side, I should say, of UTPB, and they found something over there that they went to the well on. Cooper Hamilton's not missed an extra point this year, and uh, he's Johnny the Mark there. Our score is 10 to 7. Falcons still lead with 8.09 to play in the uh, second quarter. Well, that. Uh, that drive was just about pretty much what they wanted to do with it. Well, it was, and uh, um, we'll finish that up after we come back from the timeout. It's now time to announce the winner of our 2021-2022 homecoming
largest selection of pre-owned vehicles in West Texas and 11 locations, Sewell has a vehicle for everyone. No matter your budget or lifestyle, Team Sewell has a vehicle you'll love. Visit TeamSewell.com to view our inventory today. They found it. Now that uh, drive by the Greyhound, 75 yards in nine plays, took him six minutes and seven seconds. Isaiah Tate going the final 18 yards for the score. What did you see there? I mean, what happened? Well, they just really took care of the line of scrimmage, Barry. And as I said there at the end of the of the drive when they scored they found something on their right side that they saw as an advantage kind of picked on it and uh, they'll have to make i'm talking about the falcons they'll have to make some adjustments and defensively to kind of shore up that side of their defense watch out Woo! i thought you were going to get your guess on a your wish on a kickoff uh return instead of a punt there as kobe took Andy off Robinson and really did a nice job about. watch him here on the replay folks there's just the seas parted right there in the middle and kind of lost his uh, uh, his balance and his footing there at the 37. Falcons will take over first and 10 from there. Well, that was a good return. Now, you know, you mentioned a second ago when they were up 10 nothing that you can't take off your take your foot off the gas. You didn't use those uh, words uh, expressly, but uh, that last drive by the Greyhounds was the example why. You know, you you let them. Um, you, know, you let up and look what happened. Suddenly the 10 nothing lead becomes 10-7. Well, this is Tilford, Nathan Tilford on the carry and they fall back on him for a loss of five. And so a obvious passing uh, attempt coming up. They seem to have wanted to include Zubiati a lot in the passing game. Let's see if they go that direction. If not, I would look for Link. No, quarterback is going to run it. Nope, finally just run out of bounds at the 31-yard line, so he loses another. And so the quarterback keeper is going to put him six yards behind the stick and make it third and 16. I think momentum has really shifted here right now, Barry. Watch the replay. He felt the pressure coming up, stepped up in the pocket, but nobody opened and just decided to kind of take care of the football. I thought maybe that might be a little late over there on the sideline, but the uh, guys don't agree with me in the black and white striped shirts. And as you said, it's third and long here. Yeah, third down for the Falcons. They have to the line to gain. It's gonna be the 47 yard line. If they wanna keep um... a timeout. Timeout, UT Permian Basin, their first of the half. All right, Coach Kerrigan's uh, instead going to think about it. This is going to be third and uh, what, 17? Third, third and longer than that. They have to get to the 47. They're at the 31. So, yeah, third and 16 coming up. Uh, what's happened? Well, they've lost, as, we, as I said, they've lost momentum right now. Eastern New Mexico has... Uh, Gain some confidence in the grant in the game, especially after scoring on that last drive. Um, run game right now, I think, has got to produce a little better. Uh, Barry for the Falcons. So what 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 have they run for, Larry? What uh, how many yards has had the Falcons run for? As much? Didn't seem to be. There seemed to be a lot of negative yardage. Fifteen. 15 yards, hey, you got to do better than that. Yeah, you got to better, you got to. You need to be around 150 to balance out the passing, at least, you know, to give your quarterback, think I would think, uh, Kyle, time to throw, yeah. and they can't do that if they've got the ears pinned and back. You're going to see a very deep zone here right now, keep everything in front of that 47-yard line. Yeah, again, they're flushing him from the pocket, tries to get the ball out there to MJ Link, and it's going to ball fall incomplete. And that means that Carson Roberts will have to loosen the leg up in the back. He's had some back issues, and uh, but he's been punting the ball well. 
So uh, he's going to be standing at about the 20 to 20, about the 18 yard line. Yeah, the momentum, you mentioned that, uh, momentum is a fickle character. It really is, and it's a big factor in the game when uh, you get it to go from one side to the other. Falcons had the momentum early in the game, and they've just lost it. Look at that punt, Barry. My goodness gracious, that's a fantastic. Oh, ball's out. I think UTPB's got it. I think they come up with a fumble. They did. Recovery. My goodness gracious. Wow. Ruling on the field. The fumble recovered by the offense. That's cool. That's Cole Daggett from Fort Stockton, Texas, comes up with his first fumble recovery of the season. Boy, we couldn't have picked a better time, huh? Yep, that's a momentum changer, Barry. And as I said, you have to win the kicking game. It's part of it. It's as important as anything else you do. And the Falcons get a second turnover in the game on the uh, from the uh, kicking kicking game, I should say. Second turnover total. First in the kicking game. They need to cash in here. Now they're going to start this one from the what the 22 yard line yeah very quickly get the ball out to lee this is a little quick out route from uh the receiver watch here he's just gonna play action pass to hold the linebackers and then just float it out there to link where he can catch it does a good job of getting two feet down all he needs is one and did a good job of getting that in there at the 17 now javon davis is loose and Javon's going to be down to the eight-yard line before he's going to be taken to the turf by uh, one of the cornerbacks. In this case, it was number 23, uh, Vicente Walker. Hmm. It's a good job of running the daylight right there by the running back, and they run a play very quickly here and don't get much off this handoff at all, Barry. No, get nothing hardly at all at it started from the 12, and that's where this one ended up. Going to be second down. They can get a first, what, at the one-yard line? Is that right? Uh, yeah. No, it's at the goal. It says second and 11, so okay. I don't see a, the sticks are down over on the far side, so they've yeah, got to score. Yeah, Larry's saying no, they cannot get a first. You're right. So, very quickly, up oh, here comes the pressure. Oh, goodness gracious, and the ball is loose, and it's going the other direction. Oh, my goodness gracious, what a turn of events. They came in quickly on Clayton Roberts, knocked him silly. The ball comes loose, and the end result is going to be a Greyhound touchdown. He caught that ball in the air, Barry, after Roberts took that hit. They brought the... Uh, outside linebacker on the blitz from Carson's right. He didn't see it. He was looking over here for a receiver. When he got hit, the ball just came out, up out into the air, and that young man picked it up and ran all the way for a Greyhound touchdown. Who would that be? Sateki Wolfgram. How's wow. that for a name, Wolfgram? Wow. You go home to Mama, and she says, you're getting married good. What, what's his name? Uh, his name's Wolfgram. Wolfgram. <laughs> that Wolfgram. was a that was an interception is what it's going to list. I'm going to have Debbie show that to us again uh, as we go to break. I didn't get the distance. Where's he from? Euless Trinity High School. A Trinity Trojan made the play. My goodness. So let's watch the replay if uh, Debbie has it. Uh, Sataki Wolfgram. Mm. Momentum has swift shifted again. Here it is. Watch him. He's going to come from your right. That's the play before on the running play. That, uh, the Took running him back. down to the 10. Right. Down to the 8, actually. Correct. And uh, they uh, brought him off the, the uh, person who made the hit off the right side on a blitz coming from the outside. Okay, do, do, we, do we have the interception return? And we've got a media timeout, and the, 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 uh, the wheels have come off, and the worm has turned. 
A 10-0 lead by the Falcons is turned in now to a 14-10 deficit. Goodness gracious, what's going on here? Let's right the ship. Be back with the uh, rest of the game here in just a moment. We're going to take a media timeout. And the Falcons trail 14-10. that uh, replay. Yeah, there he is coming off the edge right there, the linebacker, number 44 uh, for them. 84, uh, yeah. Ma Maz, that's Maz and Richards. That's the one you were talking about is their, their uh, number one tackler on the defense. He just came scot-free and knocked Roberts loose of the football. So oh, now they here. That's not 10 yards. So they should take the ball right there. UTPB should. You know, the, the, the um, opponent 20-plus scoring plays the track, they've had one running play over 20, one passing play over 20, but they've had now three interception returns for scores plus a safety. So the defense is outscoring the offenses in that respect, and in this case, uh, Falcons are trailing unexpectedly. Man, we were coasting and then nada. Yep, and uh, UTPB offense has got to regroup and start executing offensively with their play sets. Good play right there on first down on the RPO pass. That's a nice job by Roberts right there to come back and complete that to number 80, Marcus Molina for the Falcons. Watch. From the south end zone, just going to step and get the little stop route right there to Molina from Deer Park, and he's up the field to the 30-yard line, first down Falcons. Picks up 12 on that one, going to be first and 10 from that point. So Roberts needs to get in that huddle, calm everybody down, say, guys, I've got this. No problem, let's just uh, take control again. I mean, they got choked out there for a very – Quick amount of time there. Here goes a deep pass. Uh, pass yeah, they the say point. that there was uh, nothing untoward happening. It was intended for Molina, but uh, no call and brings up about a second down play. Now they had one on one coverage out here. They brought a blitz from the left side of the Falcon offensive line, had one on one coverage, just didn't execute and get the ball to the receiver. Yeah, our, our line to game is going to be the 20. You see it there at the top of your screen. Definitely going to be a uh, throwing down. Looking deep for that same play. And he's, oh, my goodness, he had Link open. Had MJ open. MJ had beaten his defensive back, Trey Hubert. And they just could not connect. Yeah, you're going to, you bet Clayton's going to want this ball back. Uh, because he was all alone running to the corner of the end zone. That wind is really affecting uh, that deep ball he wants to throw up in the air right now. It's either got to have a little more air, less touch, or a little more on a line and get it to the receivers. Here's a big third and ten, Barry. Well, they've got to get uh, more than half of it if they want to go for it on fourth down. But if they get to a fourth down, uh, chances are they're going to probably uh, – uh, instead, that's going to be right at the sticks. They rolled him over. That's Kobe Robinson. That's Kobe, yeah. Yeah, Kobe uh, rolled over. He had to get to the 20. Now watch. Uh, no, his knee, I think, hit at the 22. I don't think he did. He had his hand down on the turf, pushing off with that hand. And I don't think the knee did, because that's what they called. And Falcons have a first down at the 20-yard line. That's a good thing. So first and 10 at the 20, they desperately need to get this thing in the end zone. 
to take back control of this game. Javen Davis, the single back. You can see the three receivers. What are you pointing at? Well, they they wanted to go down here to, uh, I think this is linked down here. They had a safety over the top and then brought him down on the, uh, on the snap. On the Watch here. That's just a little draw play to get the New Mexican, Eastern New Mexico defense up the field. And then they allowed their running back uh, Davis to get off the left side for about five, six yards. Yep, so he needs four, or they need four actually for a first down. They need to get to the 10 yard line uh, to get a first. See if Zuviate runs a little drag here from the left to the, nope, he's gonna block. Take care of the ball, Carson. Yep, that's what he did, just threw it away. Carpenter and Ashley Clayton, so it's going to be second Carson, down. Yeah. It's well, it's hard to, you know, there's two Roberts, and yeah. so it's hard to to keep the number, number straight sometimes. So now they still have to get to the 10-yard line, so it's going to be a little less than five uh, that they need. Um, you'd think uh, uh, this uh, kind of play is tailor-made for Robinson or Zubiotti. Watch a blitz come here, Barry, if they throw. They're going to try to get some pressure on He's Robinson He's going to have here. to get rid of the thing in a hurry. Yep. I don't even see Zubiotti on the field. No, he's not on there for this play. So Davis, the single back, is going to carry it here. Oh, look and at that. And he gets the first down, and he's going to take it. He's going to take it to 14 yards. That's a but I tell you, when you're a shifty back, you're a shifty back. That's a fantastic play call. Watch here. He's just going to slide right inside there. Good crease, good blocking off the left side of that Falcon line. And he just boogity boogity, as Barry said, into the open area and into the end zone for a UTPB touchdown. Yep, so that one goes from 14 yards out. Michael Mayfield on to try the extra point, and he is Johnny on the spot right down the middle. It's the Centennial Bank sign and bounces off, and it is good. And so the Falcons have retaken the lead at 17-14. Now that's a little more like how you drew it up. That's a little more the more, more to our liking there, Kyle. Well, it is, and that you know what started that whole thing, Barry, was the that was the kickoff thought there for Eastern New Mexico. You've gotten. Uh, uh, you know, momentum back on your side and you want an onside kick? After doing that, you gave them a short field to work with after re, uh, regaining momentum. I don't understand that call at all. That's a uh, seven play drive, 42 yards, took two minutes and 17 seconds off the clock after what Kyle was talking about. And that was a uh, ill-advised onside kick that uh, went awry and the Falcons were able to recover. They started from the Greyhound 42 yard line, but you know, the offense still seems out of sync. And uh, I don't know what it is. It seems like maybe, you know, Roberts is just a touch off. He's had a couple of guys running wild and free and cannot make the connection. And that goes back to what we talked about as one of the keys he was gonna have to be uh, you know, Johnny on the spot tonight. He was going to have to play a good game and kind of get back to car uh, to uh, Clayton Roberts type numbers throwing the football and uh, you, you know, he'll he'll make the adjustment. They'll talk about it at halftime and uh, try to get themselves uh, settled in offensively. But you're right in Eastern New Mexico has something to do with that Barry. Their defense is playing very strong and aggressive at the line of scrimmage with their defensive line. And we talked about, as we opened up, Mason Richards. He's from um, Burleson, Texas. Um, he's the uh, conference leader in sacks, and he was the one that disrupted the play that resulted in the uh, Wolfgren return of a uh, pick, you know, so close to being a pick or a fumble recovery or whatever, but it ended up in the end zone. That's what you want your difference makers to do. And that's what he did for them. And that's Barry. what he did. So the Greyhounds trailing now. Oh, they're going to pitch it to the uh, to the uh, wide receiver as he comes around. That uh, is Martavius Dill. 
Dill's going to get about uh, four yards out to the 29-yard line. He's going to bring about a second and six. A slot, slot uh, sweep coming from the near side to the far side. Try to catch uh, UTPB outflanked on their right side. I'm talking about the Falcon right side of the defense and got about four, almost five yards out Okay, if you're Coach Minio, the defensive coordinator, what are you telling your guys now to clamp down? Well, I think it's, it's about maintaining gap control and finding the football. See right there, that's the zone read. Somebody's got to account for that quarterback on the zone read outside. He pulled the ball and went around their left side. Watch him here, Barry. He's going to read the end man on the line scrimmage, came down, and then just went back right back out to the left. Somebody has to account for that quarterback on the zone read option run. Hayden Kelly making the tackle, but not before um, the quarterback, uh, Nathan Valencia, was able to pick enough pick up pick up enough for the first down most chili dogs are sticking to the top of my mouth so it's going to be uh, a first down run that's going to get them some good yardage they're in forge on the tackle from the inside linebacking position look how much of this they just kind of cave the defensive line down to the left to their left i'm talking about eastern new mexico and the back came out the back side of that uh, Forge had to make the tackle, and they've got about six yards, seven yards on first down. And that was Curry Thompson, their lead back, or that was Howard Russell, rather, on that carry. And they're just missing the tackles here at the line of scrimmage, and now look what happened. He's going to be all the way down to the end zone. Oh, come on now. Missed tackles and missed tackles and poor positioning and a 43-yard run for a score. Well, they just... The, the missed tackle is, you're, you're right, Barry, right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, UTPB guy had a chance to get him, and once he missed, there was nobody in that gap. And off to the races, uh, number 25, Howard Russell went for the Greyhound touchdown. Howard Russell's touchdown, now the extra point by Cooper Hamilton. Looking to, again, add to the lead that uh, the Greyhounds have snatched back from the uh, – Falcons and he's Johnny on the spot. 43 yards and uh, man, I did not expect that. No, I didn't either and right now, Barry, they've kind of assumed command of the line of scrimmage. I'm talking about Eastern New Mexico. Their line is winning the line of scrimmage there right now. When you have a guy that's in the gap to uh, uh, make a tackle, he has to do just that. They missed it there and eastern new mexico had their blocks taken care of and sealed and off to the races russell went for the greyhound touchdown one of those greyhounds that runs at the races man he was off and flying yeah that was a 43 yard run by russell capping a 75 yard drive and it only took him four plays that's what i don't like took him less than a minute less than two minutes to retake the lead. Falcons have three timeouts and a minute 25 left, so if they can get some field position here, maybe uh, uh, get a chance to get some points on before half, Eastern New Mexico will receive to start the second half, Barry, so we certainly don't want to be on the end of the double dip here. No, we don't. 21-17 is our score. As uh, we uh, look at the clock, minute and a half left, uh, to play before halftime and maybe coach Kerrigan and uh, the staff can figure out at uh, during the break there's a flag on the play on this you see it laying there on the 35 they can figure out what went wrong and then uh, the big chief question is how to get uh, Clayton Roberts calmed down to where he can connect on those passes well and they're gonna have to make some uh some, uh, some adjustments defensively too, Barry, when they get in there at the half, see what the call is. I don't have our officials tonight. I did not get that list from uh, the person that we usually get that Personal from. Call. Illegal blindside block, receiving team, number 94, half the distance from the spot of the foul, first down. So that means uh, the Falcons are gonna start from roughly around the 10 yard line uh, as we head toward half. This is homecoming. Uh, here at Grande, 
our one home game of the uh, season, the Grande, and then it so so uh, coincide as well with it being homecoming, and uh, we'll have the uh, Queen nominees and the uh, King and the Court nominees, and they will all come out, and we'll find out who those folks are at halftime. But meanwhile, our biggest concern is we're trailing 21-17. Oh, drop play. As we uh, might head toward uh, uh, halftime, Nathan Tilford, good amount of yardage by Nate to get out to the 32-yard line for a gain of 20. Design draw, Barry, try to bring that line in that wants to rush and get uh, pressure on Roberts and uh, 33. Tilford did a good job of running and finding a first down at the 32-yard uh, line. But you, uh, if you got to get uh, in a hurry, it's a minute 11 before halftime. And they try to get the ball down there to Smart. Not sure if he caught it or not. Nope, they're going to call it incomplete. UTPB offensive line, Barry, is going to have to make some adjustments with their blocking schemes and patterns and try to get Clayton comfortable in that pocket. He's getting some pressure right now coming from the inside of the Greyhound defense. Yeah, he's kind of got a happy feet in a way, well, doesn't he? Well, that big hit will do that, Barry. Yeah. Who wouldn't? Who well, wouldn't yeah, have that? I mean, feet? I've never played quarterback, so you're right. So he's going to roll out to his left as a man open, but he's not going to be able to connect with him. How is that not? Yeah, that's got to be a late hit. Got to be a late hit on Eastern New Mexico right there. That's Chase Phillips. Watch. He's a safety coming up. And I uh, don't know if we'll get to see that or not again, but he popped Roberts after he Personal got rid foul. of it. Roughing the passer. Defense, number six. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Watch here as Clayton comes to the left here. And I see number six come up and give him a shot. See him coming from the inside there. And there's the shot. He just can't do that. He's nope. gotten rid of the ball. You need to lay off of him. Yeah, once he releases it, you got to release uh, as well. Your pressure, right. So now they're moved up to the 47, and we're down to under a minute to play. Clock is stopped at 55 seconds before half. And uh, Roberts, now we're halfway home. We need to get it down the field. Usually they can count on finding Link somewhere uh, running a deep pattern. They hand the ball off inside. It's uh, going to be a handoff to Nate Tilford. Right in there. Got something going on downfield, but no penalty. Decided they're going to run the ball and try to go no huddle here. Clock running at 37. Yep, so they've used, it. They've used 25 seconds oh, there. Oh, they dropped the ball. The ball's on the ground, and I think they came up with it. They yes. did. Boy, I'll tell you, a bad turn of it. Bo Burns comes up with the fumble recovery. Uh, they they just misconnected. And tried to draw the draw play again. And I'm not sure if Tilford did not have that ball completely secured or not. But they popped the ball loose. And Greyhounds have the football at the Falcon 47. Need to keep them out here, Barry, for sure now. Well, let me check real quick while we've got a little bit of a break and see what the uh, field goal kicker, what what he's done. Um, uh, let's see, Hamilton's longest is 40 on the season, so they've got to get quite a bit closer than this to be able to try that. Howard Russell, oh, look at that play by Forge, coming up to make the tackle on uh, the running back for a, at least uh, no gain, maybe a yard loss right there. Good job by Forge coming from the linebacker spot. Yep. Time out, Eastern New Mexico, their first of the half. Please put 18 seconds on the game clock, please. 18 seconds. So they're going to put 18, move it up five seconds from where it is now. And Eastern New Mexico wants to talk a little strategy here, see how, what they want to do. They have all three of their timeouts as well. Well, they've got two now after that timeout. But the thing, uh, thing that's going to hurt him here, Barry, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but that, that 
they're going to be kicking into the wind. So if they want a field goal here, they got to get to the 20. At least the 20 yard line give themselves a chance for that to happen. Yeah, but I tell you what they need to do is they need please. to make seconds on the clock, please. 18, 1 8. They need to uh, make sure. Well, I heard him say 18. Everybody heard 18. It still says, oh, there we go. Now they changed it. I would be looking at wherever Manny Weather is. He's number two. And Thank you. You're welcome. And lock down on Manny Weather and make sure he does not break loose for a big gainer that they can then kick a field goal at the tail end of the half. He's lined up at the wide receiver position up at the top of the screen. UTPB with three safeties deep. They're going to try to keep everything in front of them. Yep, if you play too deep, you're going to let them just uh, nickel and dime you down the field. Uh, this one's intended for uh, the uh, tuba player. Falls incomplete. Greyhound's pass falls incomplete. So it's going to be a third down play in about 11. They had many where they're covered very well. Tried to run a deep out up at the top of the screen. Had a corner underneath that route and a safety over the top. So he was not going to get that ball. Well, they were ready for all weather, I tell you, on that one. Yeah. Let's see if they leave the middle of the field. That's what I would be concerned with right now. Those linebackers, they read pass, are going to have to get some depth and take the middle of the field away. Not getting any pressure on Valencia. You notice that? Yeah. Oh, oh there's finally they there. do there. They made a liar out of you, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And up there very quickly to make the tackle for the uh, – uh, Falcons is going to be number five, E.J. Giza. And anyway, that brings us to the end of the half. It started out uh, great, 10-0. And then it, I don't know what happened. After that, uh, we brought our score to a halftime score of the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico, 21 and our Falcon 17. So we'll have the halftime uh, homecoming stuff to show you. And then after that, what should be a very exciting, but hopefully in our favor, second half coming up after that. So stay with us.
The spirit of the Permian Basin Marching Band is under the direction of Dr. Timothy Perth and drum major Brandon Littler of the Midfoot Band. The band had the honor of performing an exhibition at the UIL 5A Marching Contest at Rapid Stadium in Odessa earlier today. The spirit of the Permian Basin wishes to thank all of you for your support of their musical efforts this season. Happy homecoming and Falcons up!
Dr. Spurlock, and the president of UCPD, Dr. Woodley. Without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for, your 2021-2022 homecoming queen is Amaya Pryor. Sean Poe. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge.
largest selection of pre-owned vehicles in West Texas and 11 locations, Sewell has a vehicle for everyone. No matter your budget or lifestyle, Team Sewell has a vehicle you'll love. Visit TeamSewell.com to view our inventory today.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back uh, to Grande Communication Stadium. It's homecoming uh, at UTPB uh, today. All week long, they've had festivities. Our um, queen for 2021 is Amaya Pryor, a junior mechanical engineering major from Midland, and our king in the court, I'll tell you after this, is uh whoa that's gonna be 15 yards uh, that's not a good way to start off the second half guys come on now i don't see a flag i don't think they threw a flag barry jason pogue a junior nursing major from mount pleasant uh is the king both nominated by the campus activities board Congratulations to them. Yep, congratulations to them. And now it's back to football. Now see what kind of adjustments the uh, Falcons have made on both sides of the ball. We'll talk about some statistics that we have from the first half that I think one thing's got to happen. They're averaging 6.9 yards running the ball right now. That has definitely got to change, and that's stopped right there. You know, Glasker comes up and uh, puts a stop on that thing. Yeah, they had uh, 125 yards rushing in the first half. I'm talking about Eastern New Mexico. Uh, uh, they were 6 of 10 throwing the ball uh, for 45 yards, so they definitely dominated the game with the run. They dominated the line of scrimmage uh, both offensively and defensively. Falcons have got a turn that around here in the second half Perry. yeah we gave up 45 yards passing and we're trailing in this thing 21 17. i uh, didn't think that would be the case so howard russell will get this carry and russell's going to be out beyond the 40 yard line to the 42 it's going to be enough for the first they're just pulling the tight end or the h from the right side behind the line to the left and sealing the left, the right side of that UTPP defense and give up six yards there. Here's third and one. Need to get off the field here, Barry. Yeah, that means we need to get some penetration pressure and make the tackle. That's the thing. We saw a lot of missed tackles there in the first half. Who was the leading tackler? It says Trent Ward with four. Yeah, that means you're safe. That's what Look we need there. right there. That's perfect. Yeah, so we're coming up there is Darian Forge. Forge grabbed a hold of him and did not oh, let go. And that's the good thing. Look at that. They brought an outside linebacker blitz. Talking about the Falcons. Forge getting in the backfield and making the first hit. The guy that was supposed to pull and uh, blocking just went right on by him. I don't think he recognized that's who he was supposed to have. And that's a three and out. And the Greyhounds are going to have to punt the football. Dominic Varela was the other one in there on it. So now back to kick the ball is going to be Talbot. Came uh, after. Very close to blocking that one. Kobe's going to get it at the 15-yard uh, line. He's going to get a good return. There's a flag on the play. He's out to the 28, but we'll see if it stands. That no, probably will it's not. probably going to be a block in the back or push in the back over on the far sideline there. Falcons in the first half, Barry. Uh, 60 yards rushing, 167 passing. Eagle block in the back. Receiving team, number 81. Half the first down. Clayton Roberts was 10 of 23 in the first half for 107 yards. Did have a touchdown pass in that first half to Link, who had the lone or one touchdown, I should say, for the uh, for the Falcons. They had uh, 100, 107 passing, 60 on the ground. I think that's got to change a little bit too, Barry. Got to control that line of scrimmage and get that Eastern New Mexico defense on their heels a little bit. By the way, the punter that last time was Cage Jones. Any idea where he's from? I'll save you the time and effort. He's from Wolford. Wow. Wolford Friendship. He was the kicker there the last couple of years. So they get this one out to Jordan Smart. And uh, he loses uh, four back to the three-yard line. So things are starting off backwards here in the second yeah, half. Back on their own goal line. they got to be yep. careful with the football here. Take a deep breath and uh, move that ball forward. 
Need to get out to the 17 for a first down, so they got a ways to go yet. So they need to get part of that here. And they quickly, they get the ball out to Smart, but it's for a very small gain to the eight yard line. So it's basically the line of scrimmage plus one. That means it's gonna be third and nine. Need to throw the ball a little bit deeper. Well, and it's tough, Barry, with that wind blowing the way it is well, right now into their face. Yeah, you're right. Let's uh, take that into consideration. So actually out to the nine yard line. So it's going to be second or going to be third and uh, and uh, eight. They're outnumbered on the far side. Three wide receivers, but four defenders over there. And Coach Kerrigan does not like what he sees. Time out. UT Permian Basin. They're first of the half. Well, this is a critical play because you don't pick up the first down. That means Carson Roberts is going, is going to be kicking from his end zone. You heard him, media timeout, so we'll take it with him. Be back in a moment. We we're just starting the second half, and UTPB trails 21-17. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Well, these games, uh, Falcon games are presented by Sewell Ford, a full service dealership featuring the most tenured parts and service team and a highly knowledgeable team of finance professionals to, and give you the options available with all their uh, new products. So it's gonna be third and eight, critical eight yards needed. They're gonna flush the quarterback out. He's just gonna toss it because they got to him in a hurry. And that means Carson Roberts is gonna be booting the ball away from uh, probably North of it, MID. I think they've got an offsides possibly here. Rob Richards holding defense, uh, number 24, 10 yard penalty. Wow. Oh, automatic first down. Oh man, what a what what a what a lifesaver that is. Dave, Rob Richards came flying off the left edge here uh, for the Eastern New Mexico Greyhound defense. That was the pressure you were talking about. And he didn't have anybody open and down here on the near side because they were holding the receiver. That's right. So first and 10 now from the 19. Very quickly, Roberts gets the ball out and he gets it to his receiver who rudely gets tossed to the turf. That is, um, well, uh, Marcus Molina. Molina's been busy tonight for the Falcons. He has been, that's for sure. He has... Uh, Receiving wise, that doesn't look like an 80. Is he were an 80 sure or 86? Does. It looks like an 80. I think it's an 80. Let okay, so it's going to be second down. That gain was short to the 22. It's him again. And then let's look at the end. See, yeah, that's an 80. You're right. Wow, a little quick wide receiver screen right there. Good block of the uh, receiver over there on the far side. I think that might be. That's Link blocking out there on the top of the screen there toward the eastern New Mexico sideline, and they got a good little chunk of yardage there. Yeah, second down, they're going to need a couple third for a first down. Is third down? Third and one, yeah. No, I didn't get it. Oh, well, I think Barry Larry thinks he's got it. Blake Roberts on quarterback. 
Well, well, let's look and see where they put the ball. They say no. Roberts is coming on the field. Uh, Clayton is leaving, and Carson's coming on to kick. Hmm. Well, just uh, things uh, continue to be just a little bit disjointed. It's a little raggedy there on offense. Yeah, again, so Eastern New Mexico has something to do with that, Barry. Yeah, Their Car defensive line's tough. Carson was uh, really kicking the ball well in pregame warm up. He was kicking the ball well at halftime when he came out to keep warmed up. And uh, boy, he gets some good high skies on his. Of course, he's kicking into the wind here, and the ball's going to be down at the uh, 37 yard line. Good job of flipping the field as best he could there. We're talking about Roberts, the punter. Yeah, it's hard to kick into a wind of it that, really that, is. that much of, an, of, of a gale. But the thing is, they come away with really good field position as they're going to start at the 37. Um, you know, this is a team that took, was it to uh, look on there real quick, the overtime game that was against Midwestern, is that right? They took Midwestern to overtime before Midwestern finally was able to beat them. Yep. So they are a force to be reckoned with if you're not careful. And uh, again, he's, well, boy, there's 10 yards, 11, 12 yards. Um, Howard Russell. Just the tackling is not existent. Well, and that's, that's a good job. Watch here in our replay. They pulled the left guard, kicked out from the left side to the right. Uh, missed a tackle right there, did not wrap up. You're right, until he got him out of bounds. And uh, that's uh, Forge having to knock him out of bounds, but not before another Greyhound first down. You know, Russell's a tough runner. I tell you, he's really uh, picking them up, putting them down, as they like to say. So the Greyhounds have uh, run their way out to the 48-yard line. Their passing game has not been much tonight, but the running game has been something to be reckoned with. Going to throw it though here. Valencia is looking deep, has a man open. And uh, no flag, no anything intended for Manny Weather. Brings about a, uh, what, fourth, the third down play? Uh, that was first down, so this will be second here. Oh, you're right. Second down here from the 48 yard line. Greyhounds have the lead, 21 17. A uh, Isaiah Tate run for a score. A run by Russell for a score. Uh, and the third score was, well, what did I lose here? Oh, it was the interception, the defensive score that was uh, knocked out of uh, Clayton Roberts' hand and returned for a touchdown. And the ball all up inside. And again, picking his way, uh, finding a hole. and. Russell's down inside uh, Falcon territory at the 41 yard line. He's doing a good job of just looking and finding a place in the seam. And he's doing a good job, Barry, also of being patient and letting the blocks form and then finding that alley to run into. Uh, Falcons have got to do a better job of getting to their gap responsibility defensively and stopping the run and they have another first down at the 42 yard line. You know, when Le'Veon Bell was at his prime in the NFL, he was so good at being patient and picking his holes. Well, that's what I'm seeing here tonight uh, from this young fellow. This one's gonna be the run by the wide receiver, Martavius Gill. And Gill's gonna be inside the uh, 40 and close to the 36 yard line for a gain of five. They're just winning the line of scrimmage right now, Barry. Yeah, just uh, patiently walking down the field basically. And they've started from their 37 and now are setting up a uh, shop here at the 37 of the uh, Falcons. Falcons need to put a clamp on them defensively and uh, stop this uh, from getting away from them. Well, I don't know if they're going to throw a flag no. on that one or not. I think it was a fair play. Sure seemed to be. The pass was intended for a number 89. That's a Brazel White. Ball's incomplete. And again, there's, a, there's another example of that wind taking the ball and kind of sailing it further than 
what the quarterback would like for it to go. And I'm like you, I think the coverage was really good there. That's a good no call. And here's a big third down play. This is probably two down territory for Eastern New Mexico right now. Third and six. Third and six, yeah, third and five, something like yeah, that. Yeah, they've got to get to the 32 for a first down. Oh, quarterback keeper. Nobody, nobody knew Valencia was going to do that. They made the tackle on the uh, on the running back. Valencia kept it. Oh, what a masterful slot of hand. Well, he just read the defensive end, the end man on the last scrimmage, and he saw that end man going to the running back, pulled the ball, and got right back up inside where the running lane was. Did a good job of sealing off the uh, interior of that UTPB line and got a first down. Yep, down to the 30-yard line now. And a new set of downs, first and 10. There's Russell again. And again, a missed tackle in the backfield. You know, they have a shot at him almost every play beyond the back part of the line of scrimmage. But here's what happens watch, right here. Watch. watch. Spencer just missed him, right overran there. it. Just overran him is what he did, Barry. Yep. You'd, you'd like to see him come inside out and work him to the sideline. He overran the back. And the back had a cut back lane to uh, to do just that cut back into and got about three or four when it should have been a loss of about two or three yeah he did get three so it's second and seven you can see at the top of the screen the line to gain is going to be the 20 balls on the ground oh thought we were going to get one there Barry yeah, I thought you're going to have a corner uh, over there <laughs> Valencia comes up with it and then he gets swallowed up by um um, uh, Valencia there at the very uh, Valencia gets swallowed up by uh, Levon Barnett. Oh my, my goodness! Ran right by it. So back to the 31-yard line. So they're going to be 11 yards is what they're going to need now for a first. They need to get to the about the 10-yard line. It looks like halfway between the 10 and the 11 for a first down uh, they're going to be looking for their bed for Manny weather number two good play but instead here they intend this one for Zachary Fields it's incomplete yeah, and does that mean incomplete. that Cooper Hamilton's going to come out and try a field goal Got the wind we'll find behind. out Got the wind behind him so he's going to get a little help here yep 40 is his uh, maximum for the year it's a good play by Jocks Tyler the Cornerback, 5'10", red shirt, sophomore, 5'10", 175 from San Antonio, Church Clemens. Well, this is going to be a 48-yarder. If he can punch it through, that's a good distance for your kicker. But I'm looking at wide left. And it's going to be wide left. <laughs> that's a win for the UTPB defense. And I'm going to get on the plane and go to, to uh, Vegas after this. There you go. So the missed 48-yard field goal uh, by Cooper Hamilton. And the good news is, well, two good news uh, really is one, the, uh, the missed field goal, and the other is we take over at the 31-yard line. And the Falcon offense has a little better, <coughs> excuse me, Barry, a little better field position to work with here and they need to put a drive together and reestablish some momentum for the Falcons offensively. Uh, Miss 48 yard field goal started from their 37 mm. uh, before we're able to stop them. Here comes yeah. Javon Davis and Davis with his best run of the night other than the touchdown run that uh, covered uh, what 14 yards well this one goes from the 31 all the way out to where they're going to mark him 48 so about 21 yards 48 21 yards all right yep so his best run of the night gets him into uh, Greyhound territory now they need to finish this one off there he goes oh, oh man, his, he was cutting back a great play by the defender, by the cornerback, number 24, coming up to the make a tackle on him. Right now what they're doing, Barry, I'm talking about UTPB, they are using the aggressiveness of Eastern New Mexico against them by 
running some draw plays and allowing them to get up the field and get out of position. See if that continues. Yes, Oda Niga is the one that came up there and made the tackle on him. Man, if he hadn't have been there, Davis would have broken that one off for another 15-yard gain. But a good play by the defense. It's going to be second and 10. Davis on the run. Davis inside the 40. Davis 35-30. Down to the 27-yard line before he's pushed out after an 11-yard gain. Again, a little draw, a little uh, draw action almost right there with the, the back. He actually did a cut back there on the handoff, saw the backside open and ran the daylight here toward the UTPB sideline. And Falcons have a first down at the Greyhound 25 yard line. That's got to help your passing game. Well, it's going to, it's going to, if that continues, it's going to help them in that game you're talking about by slowing Softening that rush down. Defense, It'll slow yeah. that rush down. Yeah, because Link really has been quiet tonight, and Link's usually not quiet. They're going to throw the ball. Here comes a quick pass play intended for Jordan Smart and falls incomplete. Good uh, defensive work there by uh, Lino uh, Odenai, or, or, or Odenat, rather. Easy for you to say. Well, I'm not going to say it again, so... It's going to be a second down play from the 25. Melbourne, Florida. Wow. Well, they've got a few guys from so Florida on that roster. And off inside to Nate Tilford. Tilford's going to go. Tilford's going to go. From 25 yards away, Nate Tilford is in the end zone. And the Falcons are back on the board. Well, this is a draw play, Barry. They're using that aggressiveness against them. Watch, a little play action, get the, uh, uh, the the flow going one way and hand it off to Tilford, and he did a good job of finding the open area to run to and get into that end zone for the Falcons. Now, would you believe that's only Tilford's second rushing score of the season. Now, Michael Mayfield is on to try the extra point. The uh, hold is good. The kick is no good. Oh, my goodness, the kick is wide right. That's our first missed extra point of the season by all kickers combined. And it comes at a bad time. Well, our score now is 23-21 with the Falcons, though, with a narrow two-point uh, margin between them after that 69-yard uh, drive. We'll take a media timeout and be back in a moment. Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. By Sewell Ford, they feature a massive selection of vehicles, including the always popular F-150, Ford Super Duty, and the all-new redesigned Mustang and Ford Explorer. Is it a... Um, is that a Super Duty that you're driving? Is that right? Yep, so uh, Larry has a Super Duty. It was a 69-yard drive, five plays, two minutes and 14 seconds, capped off by the Nate Tilford run from 25 yards out. Yeah, that's the way you do it. Now let's play some defense. And unfortunately, we kick it out of bounds, and that means they'll take over at the 35-yard line. 
Yeah. Well, good uh, answer. Good answer by that offense, Barry. Yeah. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Yeah, it's interesting in the college game, you know, you win or die by the pass, but both teams right now are living and dying by the run. And that's, uh, as we said in that drive, that's taking advantage of Eastern New Mexico's aggressiveness to get themselves out of position and allow the Falcons to run in those open lanes. Now the defense has got to keep the intensity up here and get a three and out, get back off the field. Nathan Valencia, the quarterback for Eastern New Mexico is gonna roll out, looking for a receiver. Throws this one in the ground, intended for uh, Martavius Gill and incomplete. Boy, Darian Forge had great pressure on the back, on the quarterback there for uh, Eastern New Mexico, Valencia. He delivered a shot just as he got the ball away. And uh, I thought Valencia was asking the umpire for, a, or the referee, I should say, for a penalty there, but did not throw it second and 10. From the 35 yard line, they may just as well run this one with the Russell. You just don't know. May, Manny Weather's going to go in motion and move to the top of your screen. Yep. Nope. Gonna... Oh, picked it. Yep. The receiver wasn't even looking for the ball, Larry. Nope. Up there to make the interception for the Falcons is going to be Jacques Tyler. Yeah. Watch. He's not even looking for the ball. He's almost like he's. He's supposed to go block that guy, and uh, I think they weren't on the same page play-wise there. That's a great break for UTPB, and now they've reestablished some momentum, Barry. So they need to go down here and score again and uh, continue the momentum going for the Falcons. Yeah, he and uh, Tyler and uh, Trent Ward were tied for the team lead in uh, interceptions. He just broke the tie there with his fourth one of the season. 317 on the clock before the end of the third quarter. We take over at the uh, Graham 42-yard uh, line. And it's going to be first and 10. Need to cash this one in. They couldn't do with the do anything with the Darian Forge interception. Um, that they got earlier in the game. This one intended for, I think, was that? Um, that was Link running the yeah. go route. Yeah. And he was double covered, Barry. He had a guy short underneath and one over the top, and there was nothing there. Slap Roberts said he knew he was going to throw it. He wouldn't even change his mind. No, that's true. And uh, with the double coverage there, they're kind of lucky they didn't get the, uh, there's that draw play again. Kind of lucky they didn't get the interception there, but look at the draw play. Get about four or five yards there, Barry. And he gets four to the 38-yard line. Going to bring up a third and six. Now it's critical, I think, uh, for your uh, team uh, momentum and your team um, uh, psyche. Psyche, yeah, that's the word I was looking for to do something with this interception and. Uh, cash it in that the defense gives to the offense and the offense thanks him in return so we'll see gonna throw the ball deep and he's gonna overthrow link one more time up here comes a flag link was impeded and you cannot do that and so it's gonna bring out a yellow hanky pass interference defense number 21 15 yard penalty Automatic, first down. Yeah, I think that referee may have as good arm as Roberts does. So the 15 yard penalty is gonna move the ball all the way down to the what? Uh, 24 yard line? That's what it looks like. And they saw the blitz coming from the, from the right side, Barry. That's why they had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Link up there. That's why they went that direction and the impediment kept MJ from getting to the ball. And continuing the Falcon drive, Zubiati's down here at the right. See if they run him up the seam here, maybe. Yeah, that would be a good call, I think, for Coach Kerrigan. Instead, they hand the ball off to Javon Davis, who's going to get only a couple before he's going to be brought down um, by number 94, Akeem Hatchett. I'll tell you that Mazin Richards, number 44, their defensive end, 
if somebody is not looking at the coach, he's only a sophomore, but he is a hoss playing defensive end for them. He ran that down from the backside, Barry, to help make that play right there. No, that was that was Richard. You're right. I called the wrong number. So it's going to be second down and nine after the gain of one. There's Zubiotti there in your screen, 45, and he's a massive human being to be playing tight end. I don't see anybody tackles him. Going to be a second down play, looking deep, has a man open, and they can't quite connect. He threw it a little short of uh, Kobe Robinson, and uh, the pass was thrown even shorter than that. So it's going to be a third and nine needed. You're going to be kicking into the wind from 40 yards away if you don't get another yard. I'm thinking two down territory here, Barry. You know, I would say it depends on how many yards they get on third. Right. Um, but then again, a 40-yard kick into the wind. Uh, that wind was south of 17 starting the uh, game off. This is Davis, who once he gets turned around as small as he is, it doesn't take much to get him on the ground after that. Cameron's had a cruise as number zero, and they get him at the 22-yard line, so the official gains only a yard. All right, so now let's see uh, who does they're gonna, what. They're going to kick the field goal here, at least try, Barry. Okay, now remember Michael Mayfield missed his extra point attempt a moment ago. So now this is going to come from 39 yards away. And there's a good shot from our end zone camera to see what happens with this one. And it looked good, but it was short, I think. Yep, no hype nope. at all. That wind just killed it. Barry. Yeah, that wind just knocked it down. And so the 39-yard field goal is no good. Both teams have missed uh, their field goal tries here in the third quarter. And that means that uh, Eastern New Mexico will take over, trailing by a couple. As uh, we're at the tail end, the last minute of the uh, third quarter. Uh, that's got to be demoralizing, I think, because I mean they had they had the interception. They were in good position, and uh, then they couldn't get close enough to to make it a reasonable field goal try, and then that one goes awry because they couldn't move it into the end zone. So they hand the ball off inside. He gets bear hugged to the ground up there to bear hug him and do the honors is going to be our favorite, John O'Kelly. And, and call his, that, is that the first time we've called his name tonight? I believe that is. Uh, got a little help from J.T. Walker, the safety, as well. But that, I think that is the first time we've called John O'Kelly's name tonight. Yeah, they would got five yards before O'Kelly rode him to the ground. So it's second and five. Manny Weather will go in motion and shift to the top of the screen. That's where they're looking. Instead, they try to get the, they do get the ball to Artavius Dill. And Dill's going to have the first down all the way out to the 45 with a flag on the play. So let's see what that's all about. What do you think? Uh, a little, little thinking maybe they had a block downfield or a pick possibly. That's possibly what I was thinking. Personal foul, illegal blindside block. Yard penalty, replay second down. Wow, that's a big penalty because that's going to move it back on a. He was just there, Dill, their uh, receiver was just running a little drag route coming from the slot position uh, from the near side to the far was open and got an illegal block that's going to move that ball from the spot of the foul back to the 20, I'm sorry, yeah, 29 yard line. Yeah, so that was a 23-yard gain, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Well, the Falcons have retaken the lead. It's narrow, only a couple of points, but a couple of points is a couple of points. So at the end of three, it is Falcons 23 and the Greyhounds 21.
Bloomington Basin Area Foundation, PBAF has invested significantly into the university and in the Bloomington Basin. Our university and community are better because of PBAF and alumni like Sherry and Raymond. Please help Dr. Woodley and Todd Dooley thank our friends at the Bloomington Basin Area This game tonight, as always, all of our Falcon games presented by Sewell Ford. So if you're looking for a brand new car, truck, or SUV, you can uh, certainly do yourself a favor and look through that giant, huge selection of what they have on the lot and find your next new vehicle. And they've got the pros to help you figure out the financing beyond that. Sewell Ford, we thank them for their support of Falcon athletics and Falcon football to make these broadcasts possible. Forge and O'Kelly to make the play there, Barry, on the run they tried to their left side. And going to make this third and about three. I'm thinking zone read here for the Eastern New Mexico team. Well, that's what he's been doing. Valencia's well, been doing that the whole time. They're going to throw it, though, it looks like. And he getting up. They're not going to get it. Nope. A good job of tackling. That's a great job of once he made the catch, that Jacques Tyler then made the tackle and didn't let him get away. And that's their top receiver, Manyweather, coming across on the drag route. And it's like you said, uh, Tyler just read it, ran with him, and made the play. And they're going to have to punt the football. Well, let's see if they actually do punt it. Pride assures Clements. That's where uh, Jacques Tyler hails from. Now trying to uh, kick the ball away is going to be uh, Cage uh, Smith, or Gage Jones, rather. Oh, Kobe. And Kobe Ooh. picks that up unexpectedly. He was worried about giving up field position, which I understand we talk about all the time. But, boy, there were a couple of Eastern New Mexico guys there that made that very, very interesting. There. Very iffy. Well, the Falcon offense, we were talking in the break. I think the key here, the key word would be finish right now. They need to get a drive going and finish it off with some points. They've got the wind at their back now, so uh, Clayton Roberts is going to have to take that into account when he throws the ball here and uh, get the ball in to a good spot for his receivers if they want to throw the ball to be able to catch. That's a good play right there. The lone back back there with him was Nate Tilford, but he does the quick release and gets it out to number 80. That's uh, Marcus Molina. Molina's been uh, very active and uh, part of the game plan tonight. Kind of surprised though, Kyle, that they've gone away from uh, Zubiotti and uh, because he was so effective there in the early going Maybe we'll see him uh, arise at late. Here's uh, Tilford. And Eastern New Mexico may have adjusted their defense to take Zubiati away. That's right. Well, through three quarters, they have still only thrown the ball for 61 yards, but we've only got 117 through the air. And Link, who is also, who is always good for a good amount, has only got three catches for 15. See if they throw here on third in about two or three yards. Now, Roberts may run it even though he's not much of a runner. Instead, no, he does throw the ball and they're going to get the first down. And more. Is that is it going to take it to the house? Yes, he is, is going to take it to the house. Oh, my goodness. A short catch and run play and turns into a touchdown for the um, Falcons. Well, the, the defender fall down Molina well, on the receiving end of that. That's a wide, that's just a quick stop route out there. That the, they missed a tackle, 
out there. They got a great block downfield from looks like that's uh, either Jordan Smart, I think, that got the block from the receiver position. And boy, uh, Molina just took it the distance to the house for a touchdown. The extra point by Mayfield is going to be good. And uh, how far was that? I miswrote my time. It was 54 yards, 59 yards, a 59 yard pass play from Roberts to Molina. And that has put the uh, Falcons up by 30 to 21. So it's now a two score game, Kyle, and a tiny bit of breathing room. Okay, yeah, that's a. Uh... That's one of those things where we talked about finishing. They've actually the took care of it there and uh, uh, got the ball into the end zone. And now with a two score lead, it's the defense that needs to clamp that down and make that nine points work. That was only, can you believe this? That was a 12 second drive, three plays, 66 yards. Roberts to Molina, the, uh, uh, the end of the result of that, Molina's first touchdown of the season. He had seven for 68 coming in, but no scores until that one that he takes from 59 yards away, capping the 66-yard drive. Well, that's the way you do it. Well, and now the momentum is in the black and white and orange right now. So, uh, need to... Pin them deep here if we can, get that defense to clamp down, get three and out and get off the field and get that offense back on to eat some of this game clock here in the fourth quarter at 12-12 left in the game. Yeah, you look at 12-12, that means, uh, and I'm just, you know, just speculating, but uh, I think beginning with this drive, there's only two drives left for each offense. Yeah, I was gonna say two to three for Eastern New Mexico, depending on, you know, how they play defensively and offensively. I'm talking about the Greyhounds. And UTPB, as I said, can't can't really emphasize it enough right now. It's three and out and get off the field. Don't we had any, I, I don't I don't think we've had a three and out today, have we? I don't think maybe we, early maybe on. That, did they have the last drive through? No, they got a first down there yeah, too. They got a first down Spencer. Or rather uh, uh, Valencia. Trying to get the ball to Manny Weather. Can't do it because of good defense by the Falcons and their defensive back number 21, Jacques Tyler. Going to be a second down play from the 25. Well, if we were doing a defensive MVP, I might have to put him there tonight. Yeah. He's played very well for the Falcons. An interception, made that big play on third down to stop him while ago. And now he was right where he needed to be uh, coverage-wise there on first down. I don't know who I'd give it to offensively. So second down now, they're going to pitch the ball to Manny Weather. Manny Weather is going to get racked up after about a five-yard gain. He gets hit in the bread section there at the 30-yard line. That's the wide receiver sweep, just a jet sweep. And uh, that's a good job coming from the backside to make the tackle. I didn't get the number there. Yeah, I was trying to, but the replay came off too, fit, too yep. quickly. That so five yards big, is what they need. Big third down right here, Barry. Yeah, sure. I mean, he's already thrown two picks. Valencia has. He has 11 on the season now, and and I would kind of, I'm kind of sniffing for another one. Get some pressure on him here. Give him have happy feet right now. Let's see, Manny Weather's going to shift, and some they're going to they're going to try to get the ball to him in the middle, and they can't because of the pressure you mentioned. Well, they had a lot of pressure. He had to dump it faster than he wanted. And that means they're going to have to trot Basketball back out the kicker, please. Gage Jones. And uh, the Falcons should come away with, uh, you know, field position somewhere around their 30-yard line. Good job. Three and out for the Falcon defense as I ordered up there. I tried to prescribe, and now they get the football. Should get decent field position. Make sure Kobe can get to this here. Why don't you order up another touchdown? That would yeah, be nice. That would be okay, too. And they're going to start at the 38-yard line. Yeah, fair caught there at the 38, Falcons. So that uh, three and out is the first three and out of the game. Comes at a very, very good part of the game to have pulled a defensive maneuver like that. Let me double check just to make sure. Uh, and there's no, no. Well, no, they had a three and out 
basically for media back uh, on their second drive of the game. Well, you heard them. We've got a timeout on the field, media timeout. The uh, Falcons are leading this one 30 to 21, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hashtag now. You want fast? First Basin offers instant issue debit cards. Come in, open a free checking account, and leave with a free activated debit card instantly. It's free. largest selection of pre-owned vehicles in West Texas and 11 locations, Sewell has a vehicle for everyone. No matter your budget or lifestyle, Team Sewell has a vehicle you'll love. Visit TeamSewell.com to view our inventory today. There's a good shot of the Falcon mascot dancing with the fandom. They're in the north end, uh, south end zone, having a good old time, it looks like. He's happy because we have the lead at 30-21, and now we'll start from the 38-yard line for a first and 10. Now it's time to lock it down by just running the ball and uh, running the clock. That's a good gain on first down. Good job by the... Falcon offensive line of Hickok, Groschel, Pena, Wilson, and Diaz to get a good push up front and get about five yards on first down here. That was a good play on first down. I looked up uh, during the break, and uh, we had a three and out early on on their second drive of the game before that three and out we just saw. Well, it's a good time for the defense to step up and do that, isn't it? Yes, it is. So it's going to be a second down play now. He's got Javon Davis as the sole back back there with uh, Clayton Roberts, our quarterback. He's going to throw the ball, though. They're flushing him to the right. Let's see if he can complete it. Nope. Now, yeah. I think we're going to have holding in the backfield here. I'm talking about their Clayton defensive Roberts backfield. That flag came from the backside or a receiver was coming across for UTPB, and I think he might have got held. Does your finger do that all the time? All the time, yeah, yep. Bouncing around like that? Yep. Uh, all of the bouncing ball. Yeah, like Kyle, those old Kyle was pointing toward the... Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 21, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Yeah, Kyle was uh, holding his hand out to demonstrate that it was a flag on the field. <laughs> His finger just kept jumping, jumping, jumping. I was like, man, how do you get it to stop? Wonder if there's an on off switch. There's a <laughs> well, they go from the 43 yard line to the uh, Greyhound 46 yard line. Now I had mentioned, but uh, next Friday when we do the, the Odessa High Wolf of Friendship game, you will not be with us because of a special event in your family. Yeah, we have a youngest son getting married next weekend uh, south of uh, Fort Worth and South Worth, Fort Worth area. And uh, we'll be welcoming a brand new daughter-in-law into the family. And we're, we're just really excited about that. It's gonna be a busy week getting ready leading up to that wedding next Saturday night. Yeah, so your, uh, your wife will have her first daughter and guess who i mentioned earlier that link had been quiet quiet no more mj link goes from 46 yards out on the connection with clayton roberts roberts this time just dropped it into the bread basket and a good pass gathered in at the 20 and taking the final 20 yards for the score that's a beautiful pass from uh, clayton roberts right there he Adjusted well with that wind behind him, just floated it up there, let Link run under it, as you said, and the Falcons now have a little bit of breathing room. Mayfield's extra points more down the middle this time and is good. And the Roberts to Link uh, pass 
is going to put on seven more on the board and widens the lead out to Falcons 37, Greyhounds 21. Do you think maybe they're getting a little bit fatigued on the eastern New Mexico side of well, the ball? their defense has been on the field a lot more this second half. There's probably no question about that. But I think it's just UTPB of being allowed to finish off drives now. They've got some momentum. They've executed when they needed to. And uh, they feel very comfortable uh, uh, running their offense right now. Well, that one was only a minute and one second uh, uh, drive to cover 62 yards and two plays. And that was right after a three-play 12-second drive covered 66 yards. And then prior to that was a 69-yard five-play drive in 214. And so here in this half, they have put up scores by Tilford on a 25-yard run a 54-yard pass from Roberts to Molina, and a 46-yard pass from Roberts to uh, Link. And just, we were just told by the sports information director, uh, Tom Perpetua, that that is the single season with that catch, single season touchdown catch record for UTPB for, in a season for MJ Link. Yep, Link has had that kind of a year and his seventh touchdown reception of the season. He had 26 for six TDs coming into the ball game. And Tom didn't tell you who held the record, did he? No, he didn't. That wascally wabbit. I'll tell you, Tom Perpetua is the guy that we deal with. He's the sports information director for the uh, University of Texas Permian Basin, and he does a fine job. I tell you, he, without his uh, efforts, uh, Kyle, you know how difficult this job would be to do ours. Yeah, he keeps us informed with uh, all the things we need to know, takes care of us on Mondays at the luncheon, and has stuff ready for us to use uh, when we need it. And Tom does a great job for the uh, Falcons. Way up in Howard after just a few yards gained. And I was trying to see here if we see who will be uh, DeAndre Robinson on the tackle. Now, Robinson's the guy that had 17 last week. Uh, the, uh, the, the player other than Chris Hode to have that many. Hode had 21 several times, two or three times, I think, in his career. Can you imagine 21 tackles in the game? I mean, you had to have everything getting funneled to you, and you didn't miss nothing. Yeah, exactly what the linebackers are expected to do, Our Barry, and most defenses and all defenses is to fill and make nine, tackles. And, and you know, we're certainly no, we were never surprised by how busy Hode and his uh, compadre were. That was the other uh, linebacker there. Uh, they were very busy. Oh, Keegan. Keegan, yep, Keegan Gray from Andrews. Yeah, I miss him. He was a good fella. And they we, were busy. We would go to those luncheons, and Keegan a couple of times was there and uh, would always come sit down at our table. We would have some good conversations. Yeah. He and never shorted moves. himself of the food either, did he? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's when those guys show up. This That's pass right. intended uh, for Dill. Of course, the other guy was, um, no, I just uh, had my, my, my concentration broken. Um, uh, Moose, quarterback. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of it either, yeah. Uh, Taylor No. Taylor No. Yeah, he, uh, they called him Moose. He was at our table a few times, and he was the same way. And he talked. He talked yeah. all the time. Yeah, and he was, I tell you, but uh, boy could eat. Yep. <laughs> yep. Going to be a second down play. Oh, oh going to be picked. Wow. Going to be picked. They take it. Darian Forge is going to take it all the way in. And Darian Forge takes the pick for a TD. Wow. Oh, folks. my goodness gracious. Oh, watch here, Barry. He's coming right at the outside with the pink shoe coverings there. He's just in the passing lane. Just uh, just caught the ball. Didn't even bat it up. Just caught it. Said, thank you for that, my man. And I'm going to take it the other way for a Falcon touchdown. Well, this game has completely turned I mean, we were, wasn't too long ago that we were, we were about a two point lead. Yeah, we were nail biting that fact. We were, we were trailing at the time that we talked about it. 
It was 21 to 17. This extra point is good. There's Forge. Darian's excited. Oh my goodness, Darian, you ought to be. That was a 37 yard INT return. And that widens the score out to, can you believe this? 44 to 21. And it wasn't too long ago, it was 21-17. In fact, wasn't that the halftime score? That was the halftime score, 21-17. And Falcons have just uh, done taken everything. Over, they've taken over the game in the second half is what they've done. There. They've completely done that. Now, we had a question we had earlier. The seven touchdown receptions in a single season. The record was held by Mitchell Leonard. Remember, Mitch? Played for us from 2016 to 2017. He had 17 in the 2016 season. And we have a media timeout. And we'll continue our blabbering in just a moment. 44-21, Falcons lead. Take a break. Seven left in the ball game. Falcons up. The scoreboard says, "Oh, there it is, 44-21." Yeah, I was about to call time and ask him. I thought, did I miss something? No, yeah, well, they just didn't get it on the scoreboard quick enough for us. And Falcons have the lead now with 8:37, as I said, and now they can just really take a sigh of relief right now and just play good, sound defense. We just saw that from Darian Forge, and Falcons have really just taking over the ball game, Barry, in the second half. Well, they certainly have. It was 21 to 17 at halftime, and and the Falcon defense has held the uh, Greyhounds to zero points in the second half. I mean, that should tell the whole story right there. That uh, while they were uh, holding them to zero, we put up, uh, what, 27? Well, let's yeah. see. We went from uh, 17 to 44. Larry's got a good point. 12-12, we were talking about two possessions each, and look what's happened. Yeah, looks what happens is right. What's happened there, they just shut the run down right there. It's a good job by the interior of that defense, I believe. Number five there is Ladadrian Tash Glasker making the play. Yeah, 27 points that uh, the Falcons had put up and held the Greyhounds scoreless here in the second half. Well, uh, that's got to make uh, Chris Minio, the defensive coordinator, breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, that, uh, by the way, they lost a yard on that uh, first down play. It's going to be second and 11 and handed off inside. And here comes Howard again. He's off to the races as the first down and a lot more as he's going to be out close to midfield. This uh, Howard fellow's a pretty good runner. Well, Howard Russell. They can get him in space and get him a little lane to run through, and he's not shy about bouncing and finding that space and turning on the Jets, and he did right there up the far sideline to the 48 of Eastern New Mexico. Picked up 24 on that. Howard Russell, let me check his stats here in just a second after this play. Uh, their primary back so far this year has not been Howard. It's uh, might be now. <laughs> been a fellow by the name of Curry Thomason. Uh, the uh, tackle there was made by Hayden Kelly, by the way. From Magnolia. Magnolia, Texas. That's going to be there. Is that close to where Wake the wedding bell bells are going to work? Yeah, a little further south, I believe. So they're at the Falcon 46-yard line coming into the ball game. 
Thomason was the leading ball carrier with 305. Russell had only 137 yards uh, coming into the nice ball game. Oh, but what he's a been the primary guy, and this tackle made by. Stay with the camera there, guys, so I can see who. Well, I number eight. Number eight came up there to make the tackle for the Falcons. That is um, Levon Barnett. Yeah, that's what I guess. There he is, man. He just shot the gap right there. He's a safety. They called a safety blitz and uh, lost yardage back to the 48, lost a couple. So it's going to be a third down play. And it seems to be when they've been rattling uh, the quarterback Valencia enough that he's thrown the picks. Maybe they can do it one more time. Not much pressure yet. Here it comes finally. He runs for it. He's got a ways to go, and he can't quite make the connection. Tried to get the ball out to his trailing back, uh, Caden, uh, to uh, Isaiah Tate. You know, maybe Curry Thomas, and I couldn't tell if that was 26 or 28. It's 26. Yeah, so it was Tate they tried to get the ball to. Uh, Curry Thomason was listed as the starter. Both running backs are from San Diego, but we've only seen what Thompson on a couple of carries, Larry. Number 28. Got four four for, times. That's for it. Nothing. So they have to go for it here on fourth down, fourth and uh, a bunch. They have no choice. Here comes some pressure. They make the catch, going to make the first down and more. Finally, going to get him at the 25 yard line. This is Martavius Dill on the reception. And uh, they pick him up and put him in pretty quickly. And Dill gets enough for the first look. There's another missed tackle there. Finally breaks loose before Hayden Kelly is able to get him at the 25 yard line for a gain of 23 yards. We got a injury on the field, Barry. So why don't we take a break? Uh, we can't uh, keep the camera here with them. Falcons leading 44-21 or just about the five and a half minute mark to play in the ball game. So for presents tonight's uh, University of Texas Permian Basin game with Eastern New Mexico. You notice how much fun these games are when we're winning? As always. <laughs> so uh, Makes new, it a little more exciting. Well, it does. It would, but it was a little too exciting there for a while. Uh, well, there comes the pressure, and it's finally going to be, I think that's Hayden Kelly, 42, that makes the tackle on him for a 10-yard loss. Where's old Hayden from? He's from uh, Magnolia. That's right. We talked about them a moment ago. He loses nine on the sack uh, that time. There's 42 is uh, Hayden Kelly. So it's going to be second down and a bunch for uh, Nathan Valencia. Now, he's not been operating very um, efficiently in these in this position they hand the ball off inside and it's going to be a tackle by tyson carter that grabs a hold and makes the unassisted tackle but just for good measure the rest of the team comes in and piles on good job by tyson the six foot 290 pound junior from sugarland texas man don't get behind him in the in the thanksgiving line yeah in the chow line you're going to be waiting for a while yep going to be third down and 11. Six foot yeah, third and six foot two ninety. My goodness gracious! They hand off the ball inside and no, ah, good sure tackling this time. Off the bottom of the pile there is going to be again Tyson Carter and uh, a bunch of guys to come along with him, and so it's going to be a fourth down play. I doubt they're going to try to field goal here. For one thing, it's going to be into the wind. For the other thing, it's going to be a 50-yarder. 
So now it's going to be a fourth down, and they need 19 yards. Watch out for number two, fellas, number two and number three. Don't let those guys get open. Instead, they dump it off to the running back and a good tackle. A great tackle there made by number eight. That is eight, isn't it? Nope. Zero. Barnett. That's, That's zero. Maquan. That's Maquan. Maquan Mays, number zero right there. Just wrapped him up, took him down, and said, you're not going any further. Now, of course, you can see how I could get the eight and a zero mixed up. So the ball goes over on downs to the Falcons, who will start now from their 30. Clock has ticked down to uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. Not yet time for a victory formation. I got Sapien in at quarterback now, Barry. So Sudden Sapien from Midland High School is uh, come in to play quarterback here in the late going. They hand the ball off to uh, number 20. That's uh, Kevin Young Jr. And the gain was going to be, what, a couple? 32-yard line. Got about, he got about six or seven yards on first down there. Oh, it's 37-yard line. Yeah. Sorry, I miswrote. So it's going to be uh, second and three. See if Sutton throws the ball or if they just keep it close to the vest from here on out. And the ball off to... Uh, be no reason to throw the ball here, Barry. Yeah, and the ball Junior. off to Young. That was number 20 again. Yeah, Kevin Young Jr. Yeah. So it's going to be a uh, yard needed for a first. I'm thinking this is where Sutton keeps it and runs it. He's a really a very effective runner. So let's see if he uh, does a quarterback draw and uh, just enough to get the first down. He's got to touch that 40-yard uh, line stripe. Uh, Kevin Young, Jr., again, the only back there with him. Yep. Uh, Good call, Coach Sykes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so he does just enough. He gets a yard more than what they need after the 41-yard line. Mays had, a, has, uh, had trouble uh, completing passes this year, but he has certainly had no trouble running the ball. Fact, has like, I think, a 25-yard run for a score on his resume. I'm glad to see he got a little play in time. I'm kind of chagrined that Harper Terry from Permian did not get a chance to come in for South, for uh, Eastern and doubtful that they will get the ball back now. And so it'll uh, just carry on from here on out. And the ball off to a uh, Young. And Young is going to be down inside the 50-yard uh, line stripe to the 48. That's another Falcon first down. So he picks up, uh, what, uh, about 10 or 11 yards. Clock is ticked down to the minute and a half, minute and 20 second mark of the ball game. Well, what's, a, what's your thoughts? Well, I, I'm impressed with what the Falcons did at halftime to adjust and take control of the game. They, You know, we talked at halftime, Barry, about the line of scrimmage and how Eastern was taking care of that a lot. That has not happened here in the second half. It's been a total role reversal. The Falcons have won the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. They've got turnovers. They've executed at times offensively and really just overtaken the game in the second half here against the Greyhounds. And of course, as you know, how you control the line of scrimmage is how the game goes. And they have really done a good job of controlling both sides of the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively so young's going to get the bulk of the work the um, falcons uh, presented by sewell ford produced and directed by bob bailey debbie bailey as always handles the replay our camera guys today jason barrage and grant barrage from up top brandon chance in our south end zone justin oaks in the north end zone I'm not sure, Bob, if we have any grips tonight or not. I haven't heard a word, so I'm assuming not. Larry Thornhill filling in for Clay Kennedy, who's off doing a uh, event at uh, Legacy High School today. And, Larry, thank you for your work. Appreciate it. He'll be uh, in the travel trailer and heading down the road come Tuesday. Uh, thanks again to Kyle Hubbard and uh, Barry Sox here with play-by-play. -play. So. 
Folks, it was a, it was a nail biter that uh, suddenly turned from um, uh, from being iffy to being a blown away victory by the UTPB Falcons. So on a homecoming weekend, UT Permian Basin wins it over Eastern New Mexico by a final score of 44-21. We are proud to have you with us, and we will see you again in a couple of weeks.